All right, guys, so first things first, in the link down in the description, I have put an aquarium heater on Amazon that is actually cheaper than the one that I bought. Y'all check that out, and you can click on that link, take you straight to the Amazon site, and you can order it straight off of there, a little bit easier than having to search for it. Also, I have opened a store. You can see on my, my YouTube channel where it says Browse Store. You go to that store, and you can pick up some merchandise if, if you decide to. Uh, I've got some of these shirts on there, Cedar Ridge Chronicles. Got the logo on the back. Also got several other shirt designs on there that I've done. And we'll be kind of adding some of that stuff along uh, just constantly. So y'all check that out. Uh, any support that y'all can give me is very much appreciated. Uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to. <laughs> but really appreciate y'all watching. Now, let's get into some warm water maceration. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Daniel, if y'all have never been here before, if y'all have, appreciate y'all coming back. Uh, coming down to the shop this morning, we're gonna talk to y'all about warm water maceration. Uh, I have done a video on here before about cold water maceration. In the past, that's what I've always done to, to macerate my skulls because I've got so many deer heads, so many shoulder mounts, a few bucks here mounted up, but y'all can see how many I've got back here on my rack. I was doing cold water maceration in the past so that as people brought me the skulls, I could put them in cold water, leave them alone. And I informed my customers that it was going to be a few months before they got their skulls back. But in the process of taking all the shoulder mounts and having to cape and clean and flesh, just all the different stuff I was having to do during deer season and hunt, not to mention the fact that, you know, I'm going to hunt. So I just didn't have time to sit around picking and messing with skulls uh, as far as boiling process or anything else. I've been watching a few different videos on YouTube. One of the channels is called 5M Family Homestead. The other one's called US Skull Hunter. And both of those videos that they did were really, really good. Really in depth, explained why the process works like it does, explained how the process works. On US Skull Hunter, he was explaining the difference between the aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. And I never even, I never knew this and knew what happens with this, but there's two different kinds of bacteria. One needs oxygen, one does not aerobic, anaerobic. When you go to macerate these skulls, I was kind of under the impression that the longer it sat in there without changing the water, the better off you're going to be as far as speed. So I was just changing the water about once or twice a week just to try and keep it from stinking so bad that it was running me out of the world. Well, come to find out, if you don't change the water, then you don't have aerobic bacteria because they all die because there's no oxygen in the water. So you're better off changing the water daily just to keep two different types of bacteria. So you're gonna have twice the amount of maceration in half the amount of time. That being said, he also had video of doing warm water maceration with all the different, these different criteria. And the fastest way to get it done was with warm water maceration, changing the water every single day. I bought me an aquarium heater, plugged it up, show y'all what I got going right here. I just plugged up an aquarium heater. This little guy right here. And you just drop it down into a bucket with your skulls. And you can see that water, I mean, it's a little bit cloudy, but it, it's not that dirty because I change it every single day. Now, I just started experimenting with this probably about a month ago. It only takes about a week and a half to two weeks maybe to completely clean a skull, which is a very short amount of time compared to the way that I was doing it. And also, it still allows me no downtime messing with skulls. I can put it in there. When it's done, it's done. I can pull it out, spray it off. So I'm gonna walk y'all through the process, what I'm gonna change and what I'm gonna do this upcoming season to let y'all know uh, anything that, that I've found out to kind of advance the way that this is done, speed it up a little bit, keep the smell down a little bit, and uh, just make it a little bit faster, a little bit easier based on what I've learned from these other guys that's been doing it longer than I have. All right, so on 5M Family Homestead, he was showing how he takes a cooler and puts his buckets down in it. This is his method of doing it. Now I've got a little small freezer right over here that has gone out. And this big one right here has also stopped cooling correctly. And that may be my go-to right there. I think I'm just gonna completely unplug it. Right now I'm just using it basically to keep some stuff cool as it falls. But it's not freezing right. It's kind of on and off. So I can't keep any capes in there and depend on it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I've got about, probably about six or eight of these five gallon buckets. And I think what I'm gonna do is put two skulls per bucket, put them down in the bottom of that freezer. It's not gonna be plugged in, freezer's just gonna be turned off, but I can put them down in that freezer and run me a heat lamp 
to the inside of that freezer. Now, I mean, I can see uses for both. If you've got one skull to do or two or whatever, I mean, you can throw this aquarium heater in here in a bucket somewhere in a barn, whatever, and get it done. Now, you gotta be careful not to let animals get to it. You don't want the thing outside in a place where a dog can come drag it off or something can happen to your head. You sure don't wanna lose those. But in that freezer, I could even put it outside the shop or next door in the open, more open area of my barn, and I could put a latch and a lock on it to prevent theft and to prevent animals. So I think with a light like that, you could do a whole bunch at the same time, not have to have multiple uh, aquarium heaters. But if you wanna go the aquarium heater route, this one right here didn't cost me, but about, I think it was about 30 to 40 bucks. And honestly, man, it, for what it does, I was extremely impressed at the ease of operation and the speed. Now they suggest to leave this at about 90 degrees is what you want that heater set at in your water. I don't know the temperature of the water uh, when it comes to the heat lamp. I know it's gonna speed up more obviously than it would just being cold. Uh, I don't know how, how warm a heat lamp gets. I don't know how hot the inside of that freezer would get. It is insulated. So, I mean, you're gonna get a pretty significant amount of heat. But I think for doing bulk skulls, if you're doing, you know, 12, 15, 20 at a time, that would kind of be the way to go just so you didn't have to have a, a heater in each bucket. Now you could fill it up with water and just put all the skulls down in there at one time. But what you're gonna run into is you've gotta find a way to drain that. You gotta find a way to, to refresh that water every single day to keep that aerobic bacteria alive so that you keep that, that steady, quick process going. Uh, something else you run into, you know, freezers do have a drain on them. And I even considered hooking up a hose and running me a drain from my freezer so that I can just put the water in the freezer, put all the skulls in there at once, and just keep that process going. But what you run into, you've got so many little, little pieces and fragments, you've got teeth to deal with, nose bones sometimes wanna come off, and you don't want to mix all of that together and then have to try to match it all up when you get ready to put the skull back together if you have to glue in teeth or glue on the nose. And also, there's so many tiny little pieces and pieces of meat, stuff like that, they're gonna get clogged in that drain and clogged in that hose. It's gonna be more aggravation than it's worth trying to drain that entire freezer than just doing it a bucket at a time. It would also allow you to take different batches of heads, like say you get a head in in October, you can go ahead and put it in a bucket, put it in that freezer, get it going. If you got another head in a week later or two months later, you can keep all of that staggered in those different buckets. So is that they were at, as they were in different stages of maceration, you could continue the process of changing water when you needed to and keep an eye on the skulls individually instead of having to dig through a big pile of skulls in one giant tank. Set this camera down, try to hold it. Something else that I've noticed after doing this for a couple months is that the skulls are actually a little bit cleaner uh, when it comes to grease. I guess because that warm water just dissolves that grease so much better. And as you, as you macerate, you can see right here, let me show you on this bucket, you can see where the grease is floating to the top. And as you change that water every day, you're also washing that grease out of that water so it's not absorbing into those skulls. Whereas the cold water, it just kind of wants to sit there and just kind of soak in. So the degreasing process is a little bit longer if you decide to do that, uh, unless you paint them, which it doesn't really matter. What I've been doing, once this gets completely done, the skulls are completely clean. There's nothing left on them at all. I'll take them, just hose them off, clean them up a little bit, and I will put some Dawn dishwashing liquid and water in these buckets and then throw my aquarium heater back in there with it. Let it sit overnight and let it degrease that skull. It also will kill all the bacteria. It'll also deodorize it and kind of get that skull back to where you want to be able to handle it or put it in a house, you know, without all the nasty flesh eating bacteria. You don't want any of that, you know, to mess with. So that has worked extremely well. Something else I was dealing with before too, when I would get done with cold water maceration, I'd put them down in a pot and boil that water for, you know, five or 10 minutes to degrease and try to get the thing kind of cleaned back up a little bit and try to get some of that junk off the antlers where that, that maceration water just sits there. But with this warm water maceration, since it stays warm, there's nothing to sift there and dry on the antlers. Then once you put it in that, that other water to you know, decontaminate it, that Dawn dishwashing liquid is gonna get all that grease off those antlers and everything too, and it really comes out being very clean. Well, y'all, thank you so much for coming by. Appreciate y'all's time. Appreciate y'all's support. About to hit 8,000 subscribers, really awesome. Can't wait to hit 10,000, can't wait to hit 30,000. So y'all keep on watching, keep telling everybody to subscribe. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll see y'all in the next video.